the the point that I ask that is kind of a um, rapid fire question for people more towards the end of the interview, I, I'm completely happy to turn it into a longer discussion in, in focus on leadership is the question of like, what can chefs be doing better to help the next generation? And of course, taking the example of leadership as your answer, your one word answer, please feel free to mm-hmm. expand on that. Cool. So I honestly do think it all starts with leadership. And I think you brought up a good way to frame this because it's a generational thing, right? So in my opinion, we're at a risk of losing a vast amount of culinary knowledge and skill and expertise at all times just because of churn in the industry, because of people saying, you know what, I've, I've had enough of doing this right now, and I want to try to do something else. A lot of people go through that. And I think that the compounding of that over time is like a knowledge capital loss. You have the true masters of cuisine in Europe and Asia in the South and, and all over the regions, you'll have your cuisine masters. But will you have a diverse, capable workforce that can provide for growth in the industry? Because I've seen in Dallas, as a macro or microcosm rather of of the industry, many, many, many places opening in an unsustainable labor market. And so what chefs can be doing, not only the leadership of you and your brigade, the leadership of you and your team and individualizing that, making sure that you understand what makes each person tick because – Trey could push me harder than he could push a lot of other people, or he would push them in different ways. Everybody, he he had a way to push or pull or get them to do what it was that was basically the equivalent of running through a brick wall. You know, it's just like whatever it takes. You know, I'll do it for you. And that's that's one of the things that, as a leader, it's like you don't even have to call that forward. Seldom, really, the best leaders seldom have to even pull that out of the deck with a, like. You know, I, I, I'm asking you to run through the brick wall. It's something that in a high-performing team scenario is an expectation that everybody shares. And so that's like the team leadership. I think, oh, there's, there's massive room for growth, and I'll circle back to that on, on team leadership. But talk about individual leadership of you, the person, the chef, the leader, and leading by an example that is healthy. That is a huge thing that I think people can do better to lower the churn in the industry if we can get more chefs listening to your podcast, learning about how to actually diversify their mindset and invest in different parts of their life to rebalance what they're doing, because it's so easy to put in a ton of time in the kitchen and you get this kind of hyperketosis fasting effect of like, I don't eat and I'm probably on ketosis, but I'm probably also on caffeine and like a bunch of other stuff. And I'm not really zoned in on like what my body is giving me for signals. And that can cause me to lash out at people if I'm even just low blood sugar or whatever. can cause bad leadership experiences, can cause all kinds of different stuff if you're not taking care of yourself. And so that self-leadership, that ability to invest in healthy habits, to get stronger physically so that you can sustain the career. And I heard you talking about on Ray's thing too, like anterior pelvic tilt, your rounding of the shoulders, posture. Like these things, they matter long term. And leading the path on that just you know trey would do actually a pretty good example of that he would come by and say hey um when i travel around and go to this because uh, side note on him he staged in a lot of places he's been all over the place and um he's like you know the people that are in it for the longevity they have postural adjustments like they're not bent over like even if you want to get there with the plate and the microgreens and you're right there like it, it's still you can only be in so many patterns of movement for so long of a time before they shape your body Sure. And it's one of those things that it catches up on you quick. So when it comes to leadership, there's two types that I identified that the individual leading yourself and then leading as like a, the leader of a team. They're very related, but I want to hand off the audience and everybody to somebody I talked about on the Tim podcast, Jocko Willink. He is the leadership, the man. And I, I am not kidding you on this. Like, his effect on my life, I said in 2018, and it's still true. It's even more true than now than ever because I've actually been consistently listening to him and following mostly what he's telling me to do and advising on like how to learn to humble yourself. All the stuff that he talks about with his books on leadership are so valuable. The first one out the gate, extreme ownership. Like own everything in your life. It is your responsibility. Don't blame anybody else, any other person, or any other thing. Like – it is a way that if you actually have a team that does that, 
it is so positively reinforcing because nobody's saying, hey, you know what? He threw out that ninth pan of prep. That was him. Well, you know that you just didn't prep it or whatever. You know, it's like whenever, whenever people are quick to pass the buck, it's a toxic environment waiting to happen. And I think that that drives people out of kitchens. I think that drives, that drives people out of restaurants is once the, once the initial spark of the leader of that burst the entity is fading and on a downswing and things are like, yeah, we're seven months into this. It's not as fresh and as fun as it kind of was when we had it going at first. It's, it's a powerful way to reframe that. Okay. Even the morale of the people that are in this room is a responsibility of me as the leader. It's my restaurant, my chef, my, my kitchen, my cuisine. I want people to know my food, to experience my energy and my vibe. Like, it comes down to what can you actually communicate to people in the most simple way? And these are all Jocko things, like the very most simple way that you can communicate stuff to people. It's a core principle of the extreme ownership concept. And we can go way deeper on the actual mech, like, but I encourage everybody to basically either go on Audible. Audible is probably the most practical way for a lot of culinarians to absorb this book. And throw it on if you listen to podcasts. Throw on some audiobooks. Um, Extreme ownership. He balances out the stories of combat with the actual breakdown of the principle, and then he goes through how that applies to like business and non-combat environments. Here's a parallel, though. There's way more parallels between what you do in a kitchen and what the military does than most other professions. In Huge. a big way, like like the in evolution of the brigade system itself. <clears throat> Correct. It's, it's, it's one of the few few industries that still has that legacy tie where you can look at how a kitchen operates and how a military base Absolutely. operates and you can be like, yep, 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 yep. And I pull like bio of Jocko, but just so you know and why this is applicable to the culinary industry is because he's one of the best recognized leaders from the military when he was in the military. But then afterwards, what he's done with his content and his platform and his podcast sharing this stuff with people and the everyday people it's it's massive so he was the most decorated navy seal or he was the commander of task unit bruiser the most decorated special forces unit in the iraq war and so american sniper chris kyle was in his platoon and you know that's just like the name dropping way to give you some idea of who he is but like look him up and tell me that you listen to a few of his psychological warfare tracks that he doesn't communicate to you about something you need to hear because it's like Man, we all need a little more discipline. Totally. And the leadership that I've gotten from him as an individual, I know everybody who's a culinarian can benefit from that. Just throw it on. First, listen to extreme ownership. And then when you start getting really extreme with it, listen to the dichotomy of leadership to balance it out. So no, I had to give that quick shout out. No, but, but, perfect. It's perfect. Thank you, man. And I, no, honestly, like I think that what you're doing is another form of leadership. It's thought leadership, right? Like. What are we putting in our brains? It's the same way that like what we are or aren't putting in our body is affecting us. Like choosing to listen to Justin versus choosing to just like zone out on something you've already watched before and just consume mindlessly. This mindful consumption is so important if we want to have an industry to call an industry in 10, 20 years. You know, we we need to take action now to really get people to be able to sustain this long term. And I think that's a, a big part of it.